and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. Happy Sunday. It's got a lovely Sunday vibe to it. David and I are about to go out for breakfast um, and then we're going to go and do a bit of shopping. Then we're going for a walk. Then we're going to my dear, my friend's house for dinner. Lovely Sunday plans. Um, but today, never mind those Sunday plans, I'm doing for you a book haul. So I went on a booktuber meetup yesterday um, and met up with um, the quite a few of the old UK booktubers. It was such fun. We go to London and we go to various different book shops, have a lovely time, stop for a nice bit of lunch, stop at the end of the day for a drink and all have a catch up. Just loveliness. I bought four books, but also acquired two there. But I've also got a few more that I've acquired over the month. So I thought I'd just place it all together in a lovely little haulage. Um, I will start with the books that I bought. Um, David and I were... Um, out and about earlier this month and I stumbled upon a um, Oxfam bookshop and in there I bought this which is the Christmas book by Enid Blyton. This was 4 99 look at the end papers. But I used to read a lot of Enid Blyton when I was younger, um, Famous Five, Secret Seven, Far Away Tree, I had a lot of collections of her short stories and I really really loved them and then when I saw this and you know how I feel about reading Christmas books in the month of December I was like this is adorbs um it's got mistletoe and holly on the front um and it's just a lot of selection of christmas stories so like they're called christmas holidays curious mistletoe balder the bright and the beautiful a christmasy afternoon and they're all like illustrated and i just thought this would be really cute not only to have out on display at christmas but to potentially read at christmas so i bought that in an oxfam bookshop and i also got hotel world by ali smith um I have only read Autumn by Ali Smith and one of my uh, reading resolutions was to read more Ellie Smith this year. It's April, I've, I haven't read any, um, but I've got a few of her books now and um, I thought this would just add to my collection. Um, and this is a novel. It is a passionate, funny, serious, captivating glimpse into the lives of five people connected to one branch of the ubiquitous global hotel chain, brought together and forced apart by a bizarre incident involving a dumb waiter. We share their very different experiences of life in the aftermath of death, of pain, of sorrow, of hope and love, everything in fact that the world dares to throw at us. So yeah, quite like books in hotels as well, quite interesting. So um, earlier this month, um, there's quite a few Mothbox related items in here. So um, Mercedes from Mercedes Book Musings runs a um, book subscription service where you can get books um, from independent publishers and one of the books that I read recently was The Handsworth Times which was published by Blue Moose, an independent publisher which I had not heard of before then. Um, having read Handsworth Times which I really enjoyed, I went on the Blue Moose website and as it was their 10 year anniversary they were doing uh, two paperbacks for £10. Could I turn that down? No I couldn't. So I picked up A Modern Family by Socrates Adam. Uh, this says here, television's most popular car show presenter lives his life in the shadow of his career and his persona. He has the perfect job, he doesn't have the perfect family. His wife wretches in the bathrooms of exclusive restaurants, his daughter's obsession with a friend is consuming her, his son lives a double life selling pornography by day and gaming online all night. The presenter views his family from the outside and watches as they slowly disintegrate in front of him, unable to control anything that is not scripted. So I really like family dynamics and like the intricacies of families and sagas and things like that. So this sounds really good and um, it's not actually that long. I think it's... Yeah, it's 145 pages long, so shouldn't take me too long. Looking forward to reading that. And then I also got this one, and I'll be honest, this one was purely bought because of the cover. <laughs> so this is a beautiful tree, um, which has got all birds and flowers and things in it. And this is If You Look For Me, I Am Not There by Saruyu Srivaska. It says here, when Malika loses her longed-for daughter at birth, it is not only the loss of the, in the family, the surviving twin, a boy, loses the loss of his mother. He grows up needing to be the daughter his mother wants, the, sci the son his scientist father accepts, and more with the guilt of being the one who survived. In a recently independent India, haunted by its colonial past and striving to find its identity, he struggles to find his own self. So yeah, this again, I really like family dynamics and family saga, so this, this sounds interesting, but also being set in India, it sounds like I'm going to be well up for it. The only thing I will say, though, is it was a bit damaged when I got it. Um, which is a bit of a shame but yeah this is slightly longer but also looking forward to it so yeah blue moose definitely check them out i'll leave the um, link down below if they're still doing the two for ten pound paperback offer i will uh, i'll leave that down below for you so yeah so speaking of mothbox as well i also got uh, the two mothbox books this uh, from this month's box um i'm sure everyone's opened theirs by now but just in case you haven't turn your eye away now um that is the 100 Shall shadows by huang Zhongeng. Uh, this is set in um in seoul 
in a slum electronics market in central Seoul, a city better known for its shiny skyscrapers and slick pop videos, an awkward tentative relationship grows between repair shop assistants Yungo and Mujai. Having both dropped out of their formal education, their circumstances are already uncertain when the market is earmarked for demolition and events seemingly linked to strange recent developments. The shadows of the slum's inhabitants have started to rise. So yeah, I really enjoy it, book set in um, Korea. Uh, and I find them very interesting. It's also introduced by Han Kang, who is the um, author of Vegetarian and Human Acts. Vegetarian, one of the best books I've read last year. Um, so yes, that is that. And then we also got Little Nothing by Marissa Silva. Um, and this has got a quote on it here from Lauren Groff, who wrote Fates and Furies, which I really enjoyed earlier this year. The novel twisted me up inside. I enjoyed it. It said I loved it. I've changed her words. Bless you. Thank you. David just sneezed. Um, so this is about... A in an unnamed country I'm aware I'm just reading out blurbs to you I won't do it for any of the rest I do apologise in an unnamed country at the beginning of the last century a peasant couple longs for a child despairing they turn to gypsy tonics and archaic prescriptions and one cold wintry night the couple's wish comes true but the silence that follows the birth fall warns of darker days to come strangers look on askance and fall speechless in the child's presence and villagers protectively hush their children as they pass on narrow market lanes Pavla is no ordinary child but then this is no ordinary tale I really love the front cover of this this is gorgeous look all this like embossed niceness, just nice. Um, so then the next ones are books that I got on the booktuber meetup. So um, my blanket's falling down. I say that happens all the time, don't I? Don't let it fall down, Lauren. Um, the first two are, so before we go, quite often there's um, on our Voxer group and in the Facebook group, we say, oh, I've got these books and I'm giving them up. Does anyone want them? And um, Caitlin uh, from the channel Kitty G was kind enough to give me Little Deaths by Emma Flint. Um, this was long listed for the um, Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction. Um, I spoke to a few people who have read it and they're not sure it's going to be on the shortlist. But this is um, set in 1965 in New York and it is about a uh, her two children, a woman whose two children go missing and it's a look into that and things like that. So yeah, it sounds um, interesting. It sounds like I was surprised to hear it was on the long list because it doesn't sound like the sort of book that would be on the long list. But I am interested in reading it um, and... If it's on the shortlist, the shortlist gets announced tomorrow. If it's on the shortlist, I'll read it quickly. I don't know if it's going to be. If not, it might be a book that I read in the summer. She also got me, David, you're going to be interested in this. Archie Cat. Snufflekin's Oliver Valentine Cupcake Tiberius Cat by Kate Harnett. It's a picture oh, book nice. set with pictures. So I'm going to read this and then I'll probably gift this on to Molly. But um, this is by Flying Eye Books. They really publish the most gorgeous children books ever. So this is about a cat who lives on Blossom Street and he's called something different by everyone. Um, so I think it's just going to sound really cute. And the artwork's just beautiful. And it's just really lovely. Oh, I do that. Yeah. yeah, David's going to enjoy that too. So that's just a very, very cute little one. Um, and then the books that I bought. So we went into... One, two, three, four, five. Seven bookshops, and I bought from two of them, which is pretty good. Um, so the first one that I bought from was the London Review Bookshop, which is a very, very lovely independent bookshop, which has, I always say, I love their tables. They really have good stuff out on the tables, and you are drawn to these tables where they've got, like, just piles of wonderful books, um, all put there, like, due to a certain theme or something, and you're just drawn to it, and their window display is really good as well. So the first one I bought was Girl Trouble, which I hadn't heard of before, um, Panic and Progress in the History of Young Women by Carol Diehouse. Um, I love this front cover. It is amazing. And this is about, um, this is a non-fiction book about any sort of social scandal or moral outrage that's happened. Um, there is always a woman at the heart of it. Um, and I just thought it sounded really, really interesting. And it goes from things like, so it's got things like, um, whether it be the story of brazen flappers staying out and up all night in the 1920s, inappropriate places for Mars bars in the 1960s, or Courtney Love's mere existence in the 1990s, bad girls have been a mass media staple for more than a century. I just think this sounds amazing. I'm really looking forward to reading it. I think I'm going to, I'd already sort of planned what I was going to take away from my holiday, but I think this is going to come on holiday with me as well. And I just, I love that cover. David, look at this cover. Oh, that's lovely. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. And then I also got, so um, on the desk, uh, so at, at the um, till, they have um, really good, like, sort of little, oh, I must buy that as well. And I've been meaning to buy this for a while. It's um, Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie's book. Um, the, it's sort of like the same as We Should All Be Feminists. This is J Dear, and I still haven't learned how to say this name yet. Ijualia, I think. Ijualia, and it's a letter to her, to her goddaughter um, with sort of feminist... Um, advice and things like that and it's really nice underneath because it's bright orange um 
but yeah, I've been meaning to read this for a while. This is not a long book. It's quite big font. I don't even think it's, yeah, it's, it's like 60 pages. Um, and I've been meaning to read this just off the back of loving um, We Should All Be Feminists. Um, looking forward to it. Love her. Love her, love her. And then the other book that I bought, uh, other bookshop I bought books in is um, Any Amount of Books, which is just down the road from Foils, which is written near a really really good Swedish bakery Sana from Books and Quills um, said oh does anyone want any Swedish pastries yes we do I went in there and I had a cardamom bun oh it was just the right amount of, I don't like super sweet stuff it's just the right amount of sweetness spiciness everything and they all it was it was really simple in there they just had like walnut buns cardamom buns or cinnamon buns all of them looked amazing I had cardamom because I love cardamom lovely but anyway never mind that I can't think what it's called Fabrique I think it was called um, I got David, next time we're at the theatre, we're going to go to Fabrique and get... It's right by Harry Potter as well, so we can go there. Really good Swedish buns. Cool. Bun buns. Um, and we went into any amount of books, which is a bookshop just down from there, after I've stopped talking about those buns. Um, and it is a second-hand bookshop, but it has a lot of proofs in there. So I imagine they, get, they have quite a high turnover of people dropping off proofs and things that they don't want anymore. Um, and you always seem to get some really good bits in there. So one of the ones I got was The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. This is massive, isn't it? It's really nice and floppy as well. This has also been um, long listed for the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction. Um, and this is a sort of, it's a love story, but not what you'd expect. And it's a, it's a fairy tale, basically. I was, I'm in an iron about whether or not I'd like this, because I'm not a big magical realism, speculative fiction type of gal. Um, but Simon convinced me. So... Again, I'm going to do the same with this. If this is shortlisted um, on Monday for the Bailey's Women Prize for Fiction, I will read it quickly. If it's not, may, this may wait until the summer. So, yeah, big, big book there. And then this one was a bit of a sort of picked it up on a whim. Um, this is called The Wanderers, and it's by Meg Howery. It is about um, when uh, astronauts, space people, I almost said. <clears throat> when space people, when astronauts are in training. Excuse me, I need to clear my throat. <clears> throat> when astronauts go into training they go into the Nevada desert to learn how to deal with um, situations there and like bleak environments and things like that but I also believe it's got something to do with like virtual reality and things but she's 53 is a woman called Helen when she's 53 she oh look uh, David's picking up Minnie like a baby she'd offered a place on the training program for the first crewed mission to Mars and she cannot refuse a last chance to walk among the stars this is a proof as well and yeah, I feel like this might be a summer read. It might be, I might have to rethink my whole holiday TBR. Minnie, what are you doing? Don't knock that, you'll be in trouble. She's a naughty girl. So yeah, those are the books that I've most recently picked up. What books have you most recently picked up? Oh, David wants me to show these. I also went into Forbidden Planet when I was on the um, booktuber meetup and got two coasters, a Gryffindor coaster for me and a Hufflepuff coaster for David. And I just think they're really nice. They're a bit different to the normal... Quite often they're the bold, like really black and yellow for mm. um, Hufflepuff oh, nice. and really red and yellow for um, Gryffindor. But these ones I think are a bit different. They are still um, copyrighted by Warner Brothers, so they must be made by them. But I just thought they were a bit more different. Can I quite different see the Gryffindor oh, one? Sorry, David's got it. Lucky. It's better. My lovely, lovely. So yeah, those I also got those. So those are the books um, that I bought recently. What have you guys bought recently? Have you read any of these books? I was trying to pick these up at the end, but then it all just goes horrifically wrong and I drop them all all over the place. And also, a, pa a pile of books is much heavier than you might think. Um, yeah, so these are the books that I bought recently. Um, hope you've enjoyed my book haul and I'll see you all again soon. That's really poking me in the throat. Goodbye!